this morning. And um, while we're under the anointing, I want to talk to you about it. You can stop thinking. Amen. Everybody just get your hands for a second. Now, I don't want anybody to do any more walking. We've been doing a lot of walking during the service. Now, babies, y'all get your bladders together. Amen. Let the earth keep silent. The Lord is in this holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Raise your hands. Amen. 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 Raise your hands to him. Ask the Holy Ghost to talk to you today. We're getting ready to feed over the word. Ask the Holy Ghost to talk to you today. Talk to me today. Ask him to help you find yourself in the word. Ask him to deal with your desires. Ask him to deal with everything that's not like it. Ask him to talk to you. Ask him to deal with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Musicians, too. Ask him to ask the Lord to deal with you. The preacher's asking God the same thing. Thank you, Lord. Deal with us. Deal with me on today, Father. Deal with us, Lord. Deal with us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Turn the mind back up. Deal with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Open your mouth, say, Lord. Lord. Deal with me. Deal with me. Thank you, Jesus. Deal with Lord. Lord. Deal with me. Deal with me. Deal with everything that's not like you. Deal with everything that's not like you. Don't say like you mean it now. Say deal with everything that's not like you. Deal with everything that's not like you. And place in it. Every ungodly appetite. Every ungodly appetite. Every ungodly soul tie. Every ungodly soul tie. Deal with it. Deal with it. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your word. I say yes to your word. Deal with me, God. Deal with me, God. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all ready to eat? Yep. <clears throat> Say, you ready to eat? Yes. Get a little bit excited. Say, you ready to eat? Yes. Amen. Clap your hands. Let's eat some good food. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's get into this. Uh, we've been in this whole series thing about relationships, right? Last week we found out some interesting stuff, didn't we? <laughs> Amen. Now, in case you all want to we're continuing to set the tone uh, for the role of the ministry. So if you hear me and Mother Davis asking you to do certain things, it's because uh, we're bringing certain things in order. Amen. 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 Now, one of the things is, uh, because it's not that many of us in here, we always want to keep a formal space of worship. So, you know, if you only got seven, we don't need five over here and two over here. <laughs> uh, right? We try to keep, you know, a, a flow of worship in a unity. Amen. 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 It just helps. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Ask anyone to sit on the front. Don't try to subvert the instructions and do it your way. Please, just sit on the front for a cooperative witness. Amen. 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 All right. Somebody say order. 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 Nothing, and I, and I told one of the children this, I think it was some, sometime this week or last week, nothing grows, manifests, or flourishes without order. Okay. Let me ask you all something. My dad used to ask me this all the time. But I'm going to ask you this as a pastor. Do you believe I love you? Yes. Yeah. Do you believe Pastor David loves you? Yes. yes. Y'all believe Mother Davis loves you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do you believe I love you? Yeah. Yep. Do you believe Mother Davis and I have a right heart toward God? Yeah. Yes. Do you believe we, that we would ever tell you anything wrong? No. Or from a place of flesh? No. Have we ever exhibited that spirit to you? No. Guess what? Never will. not ever our intention. I want you to hear me with all of the 
clean and that's within me. Art. Give me from my goji apparatus. I've been in church all my life, 41 years old, and I've been in church all my life, and I've seen all kinds of definitions. From the pulpit to the daycare. <laughs> I'm supposed to sit back over to the daycare. From the pulpit to the kitchen. From the pulpit to the basement. I've seen it. I have sat on so many organs, and I've been a part of uh, board meetings, staff meetings. And I've seen all kinds of crap going on. I've seen pastors have affairs with the secretary. Oh, you see a lot of the musicians. The dangerous part about being a musician is that you sit where the preacher sits. And me working on both sides of the coin, I see it all. Okay? I mean, I've seen some stuff go on. All kind of manipulation and foolishness in the house of God. But here in Zion City, we have an, uh, an, an allergic reaction to foolishness. If you come in here with it, this is where you're going to wind up. What's this big old space called? The altar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we don't have time. I've been, I've been playing for churches for a long time now. <laughs> I started out playing from a dad at 12. Started out playing drums in 1982. By sixth grade, which is somewhere around 12, 13, I was playing from dad. We were going to different churches, preaching on Sundays, you know, the afternoon service. I'd take a little drum set, pack it up in the car, uh, and we'll take it to the next church. Then pretty soon, I was playing for the choir. Right, sixth grade, I started teaching all the way up to my first year of college when I was 19. Was which when I played my first, uh, preached my first sermon in 19 from Ezekiel 37. How deep is your Holy Ghost? I got in trouble for that sermon. <laughs> How deep is your Holy Ghost? The prophet Ezekiel said, I got in the water, harbor was waist deep, foot deep, waist deep, and it went over my head. Amen. How many of you want to go into deep waters today? Amen. Amen. How many of you want to see in the spirit? Amen. Amen. You interested in that? Amen. You know what? Let me tell you something. Don't be like Paul. I want you to always speak in tongues more than anything. But you know what? If you never speak in any tongue, and you will again, but if you never do, how don't you be able to see the devil come? Amen. I want you to see. Listen, we got all the anointing in the world, but we can't see nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, 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 ladies, uh, mothers, you don't get, you don't get a little perturbed at the children when they can't see what you see. Now, now we have a joke going on between the Davis and Ava, our family. Don't none of our kids like doing this. <laughs> It's a spirit. It's a demonic strong. <laughs> what it is. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Man, we're going to break that down. We're going to wash these dishes. <laughs> Princess, Princess Lakeisha come to our house and dishes screwing all over. We come to our house and dishes dancing. And all of us are sitting and looking at our kids like, what y'all see? <laughs> these dishes. And we go with your life, don't say nothing. <laughs> and the kids come here to see the dishes, they don't say nothing. <laughs> but how many of you know if the dishes stay dirty, some stuff's going to happen? Amen. Amen. We pull the principle. See, it, it doesn't bother the kids because it doesn't directly affect them. Amen. They haven't gotten sick from eating from the Stacky Boxers Corral. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what Stacky Boxers is. Mm -hmm. It is a nasty little germ that forms uh, on dishes that are not cleaned properly in the proper water temperature. We 
You let your dishes stay up too long, and they start taking root. Amen. Start growing fuzz. You need the Holy Ghost, girl? <laughs> you just over there shaking and carrying on. What's going on? You need her? Oh, you need a sauna. Dad, Dad, your sister's calling. Huh? Your sister's calling. But they don't see it. <clears throat> but the burden lies with the ones who know better. So as head of the house, I find myself doing stuff I feel like I shouldn't be doing. But I have to do it. Because I don't want my house out of order. Amen. Now, does the house get out of order? Yes, it does. Every house gets out of order. Do you let it stay out of order? No. No. Yeah, fix it. God has delivered us. Anybody here to get delivered? Amen. Amen. Raise your hand high if you've been delivered. I mean, God has set you free, right? No longer where you were. You want to go backwards? You want to go backwards, right? Then you know you go backwards. That's your death one sign, right? Watch this. After deliverance, there's a couple things you have to happen. Okay. This is where we mess it go. Uh, after deliverance, three things need to be put in place. That's what we're going to be working on. Somebody say, after deliverance. After deliverance. Say it again. After deliverance. Say it like you mean. Say, after deliverance. After deliverance. Say, after deliverance. After deliverance. After deliverance. After deliverance, you need three things. You need teaching. You need the spirit of discernment. And you need prayer. Amen. Okay? Prayer helps you to put... Them glasses on. Mm. Talking about the future. Yeah. Amen. I'm gonna have to find some way to put that, put that message on the CD. I want to get out the back over again. You know, sometimes it's preaching the Holy Ghost get to using us, and we've been like, oh, I need to hear that too. <laughs> Rewind. But but prayer is what keeps you silent. You ever you, you ever you ever wonder? Ever see people come to church, they do nicely for a minute, and they fall away. No prayer life. Everybody say prayer life. Prayer life. After you get delivered, after the Lord sets you free, after you're set free, doesn't mean you're mature. A lot of you young folks just got filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, when you speak in tongues, God's been doing wonderful things for you. But being filled with the Spirit doesn't mean you're mature. That's quiet right there. Being filled with the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you've reached the pinnacle of spiritual maturity. Say amen to that. Amen. 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 That's, not a, that's not a put down to you. But I'll let you know where you are. Now, with being able to pray in the Spirit, you have the ability to release God's will. Right? Yes. The Bible says when a man speaks in tongues, he speaks to God. It's between God and himself. Right? Uh, praying in tongues builds up your faith. Right? And it can help to mature you. But being filled with the Spirit in itself does not mean you have reached spiritual maturity. Okay? There's a lot that has to be learned along this way of holiness. All right? So, after you've been set free, after you've been delivered, you uh, have got to undergo teaching. That's the reason why we teach like we do. We're going to do a preacher kind of a little bit. But, but we want to spend time making sure that you understand where you are in the spirit. This is a spiritual church. I said, this is a spiritual church. Amen. And when I say spiritual, I don't mean, you know, Numbers given and all that kind of stuff, and all the food, <laughs> food you. I mean, he 
that they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's the definition of spiritual. A body of believers who live their life by the direction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is that what you want to be? Amen. 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 So, in order, in order not to get tricked up by the enemy, because it's so easy to do. It's so easy to do. It's so easy, you know, we, 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 we feel that power, the power of the Holy Ghost get on us, and at that moment, say they're going to mess with you. Because you're going to be anointed. He will not come near you. And as you progress, listen, you got to know your enemies. <laughs> Satan is crazy, but he's not stupid. You are not the first ones to come up against it. Here you are, 22, 19, 14, you know, the Lord is using you all, 16, and you're getting your life together. Do you think that after millions of years of being on this planet, he doesn't know how to deal with you? Please hold it. Say preach holy ghost. Preach holy ghost. You think you think Satan, and I'm not giving him glory, I'm just telling the Bible says we have to know our adversary. Yeah. You think he doesn't know how to come after you? Mm. He knows how to come in frontal attacks as well as the subtle ones. Mm -hmm. Satan is a master illusionist. He knows how to come subtly and trick you. Okay? You gotta watch. This is why <laughs> you said you gotta watch. This is why the spirit of discernment is necessary. It's spelled discernment, but it's pronounced discernment. The ability to decipher spirits, the ability to discern motivation and intent. There's no such thing. Don't turn I hope you're listening. There's no such thing. There should be, there should be no such thing as a Holy Ghost filled Christian who can't sense the devil. Amen. Who can't see the devil coming. You, you, do you know, let me tell you something. Do you know why we get some Holy Ghost filled Christians with big mouths, can't stop arguing? They got the head of the last point. They're arguing, as one said, they're arguing with Rick. That's bad. You argue with Rick. Won't nobody shut up. You know why? Because nobody can see the devil coming. Husbands and wives fall out with each other all the time. Why? Nobody can see the devil coming. Brothers and sisters fall out of time. Why? Nobody can see the devil coming. You got to be able to subvert, subvert the enemy before he gets to you. In order to do that, you need the spirit of discernment. Amen. And prayer is what keeps your discernment keen. Hello. Amen. Are you learning? Amen. I said, are you learning? Amen. Prayer is what keeps your discernment keen. Everybody say prayer. Prayer. Say we're talking about prayer. Say that, but we're talking about prayer. Say prayer is what keeps my discernment keen. It's what keeps my discernment sharp. It's what keeps my discernment sharp. Okay. So now we're developing a family here in Zion. One of the things, and I'm glad everybody's heard that, one of the things that the Lord has been dealing with me about is to teach against the spirit of division. Now, let me learn you something. Tap your neighbor and say, Pastor, you need to learn you something. Let me help you out. In this house, division cannot be tolerated. Amen. But what that means is you have to put your pride behind you. So Satan doesn't get the upper hand. Now, first of all, now I, don't, I don't know if I've ever heard any other preacher teach this way. This way I'm going to teach you design now. First of all, numerically we ain't that big. Okay? So we don't need divisions in here. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. Amen. 
Ain't but two of us right now to sit in. So we don't need breakups. <laughs> we don't we don't need folks getting mad with each other. Ooh, I ain't calling her no more. Ooh, I ain't calling her no more. She get on my nerve. On my good. You know, we don't <laughs> Satan knows how to affect the effect of the anointing. You got what I'm saying? He knows, Prince Jasper, he knows <coughs> that he can affect me and Mike's relationship, I'm mad at him. He cute-faced cute faced him. Cute faced him me. What? Q. I just made that a Q. You know, if there's something going on, it shows up in the music. Right? People can sense the hindrance. And me and Mother, me and Mother Davis coming here. And I'm mad at her, and she mad at me. Y'all can feel that. Right? Amen. It, puts, it puts a stake on the worship. Somebody say, dang. Dang. It puts a stake on the worship. Princess can hear, mad, uh, mad at Jonathan, Jonathan mad at Carolyn, Carolyn mad at Queen, <laughs> Queen mad at Tania, everybody mad at Helen, everybody. How are we going to worship? How are we going to get the anointing in here? Huh? How is the Spirit of God supposed to flow if everybody mad with everybody? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying nobody is, I'm just giving an example, okay? But I'm saying, how, how, how are we supposed to go for it? And if your church ain't five, they go five people, you need all the unity you get. Amen. 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 So I'm learning you now. That's the proper term is a teaching, but I'm learning you now. Okay? But this is something I don't believe any preacher should ever stop teaching. <clears throat> because at some point, we got to be wise enough to see the devil coming. Amen. I refuse to let the devil get between you and me. Amen. Amen. How does your neighbor say, you, like Bridget says this all the time, you are not my enemy. You are not my enemy. You are my friend. Look at it again. Say, I refuse, I refuse to let the devil get between you and me. I absolutely refuse. If there's anything that I say that you don't understand, come to me. Ask me. And they all understand the same thing. Pastor Davis, I don't understand the same thing. Pastor Davis, I don't understand what you mean. Gavin, I don't understand what you mean. What do you mean by that? And then we've got to learn, and this is all we've got to do, and then we've got to learn how to talk to each other without getting upset. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. When people have a conversation, trying to get stuff straight, and everybody's tone is escalating, and nobody's stopping it. Come on, bring it. You know, bring this home now. This is this. The Bible says the soft answer diffuses, it disarms wrath. You come to me screaming, and over time I learned how to say, all right now, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's talk to Let's talk to I want you to calm down. He wants to talk to Let's have a seminar. Let's talk this time. Mac and cheese, that's a normal work on any yeah, situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's talk now. Let's talk it out. Glory to God. And when we use the loving tone, and, uh, oh, okay, I feel the Holy Ghost digging in this. You've got to learn how to let, why am I going this way? You've got to learn how to let the other person talk. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I feel it all going here. So let's deal with the spirit of offense. Amen. Amen. Oh, Holy Ghost, we hit it, didn't we? Go there. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. What time is it? What time? Oh, God, I'm going to be tired when this one's done. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> 
deal with the spirit of offense. Offense. What do I do when I'm offended? Piss off at you. There's a disagreement. And because of disagreement now, there's division. Number one, saints do not handle division, disagreement, and offense like the world. Amen. Amen. Y'all fearing to say amen somebody. Amen. I'm just back up for only y'all sitting here. No, say amen to that. Amen. 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 Saints, we ain't quick you know, Stand up, stand up. We ain't supposed to be up there. Hey, partner. <laughs> you don't know who you messing with. <laughs> you need to get that bass up out your voice and talk to me. Come correct, nigga. You know. <laughs> That's not how the saints are supposed to run that. No. <laughs> That's how the world handles it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, y'all ain't supposed to be pulling each other's weave and hair out and yarn out. <laughs> I don't get, get on my nerves. I don't understand. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all scratching each other like cats. Y'all just some money. Y'all just some money. I don't understand. I don't, you, you know what? You, know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you can just get out. We do not handle disagreement in the vision. First of all, let me tell you this as a pastor, as a prophet of God. It's hard enough to tell the truth. Amen. 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 It's hard to tell the truth. But you know who holds me responsible if I don't? I'd rather have you mad at me. <laughs> Be mad. But I am not going to lose no sleep because I didn't say what thus said the Lord. Amen. Oh, oh no. Amen. You don't know what that feels like. For God to be pounding on the basement of your spirit at 5 o'clock in the morning saying, You didn't tell them what I told you to tell them. Amen. I can't call you to shut him up. <laughs> Let me give you a secret when it comes down to talking to God. Ain't no shutting him up when he gets to talk. What I'm going to do, tell God to shut up? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Okay, so pastors, preachers, prophets, evangelists, we have a responsibility. We don't do nothing else. And that is to tell you the truth. Amen. And ye shall know the truth. Talk to me, saints. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth you know will make you what? Free. So you can be pissed all you want to. I got to tell you the truth. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. I'll do my best. And I do believe the men and women of God do their best to speak the truth in love. You know, we ain't just trying to blast you. You know, put all your stuff on parade and on blast and on. No, we're trying to do that. But we got to tell them the truth. So we got to deal with disagreement with the spirit of discernment, but we got to deal with the right way. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, so now how do we deal with that? Let's go to But if you are always fighting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Okay, but the Bible says at the beginning that you fight and devour one another. Mm -hmm. Devour one another. Be careful that you not 
consume one another. Bless your children. Be careful that you not consume one of another. Okay? But we can't be chewing each other up. There ought to be, there ought to be, and I ain't gonna there ought to be a little bell of conviction that goes off when there is a division between you and your brother, between you and your sister. Y'all hear, hear what I'm saying? Amen. There, there should be something go off in your system that says, I can't live with this, with this talent in my spirit. Because number, number one, we're born of the same spirit. Y'all hear me? Amen. We're born of the same spirit. Now, from now I want y'all to come with paper and pen when you need to write some of this stuff down. Uh, but we're born of the same spirit, washed by the same saving, saved by the same blood, right? Amen. So there should be no division between us. Mm. But if there comes a disagreement, there's a certain way to handle a disagreement. Amen. Okay. Just because we disagree doesn't mean we have to be mean with each other. Amen. Just because you disagree with me doesn't mean you got to be mad at me. Doesn't mean I got to be mad at you. <laughs> Turn around and tell your neighbor this. Neighbor. Neighbor. Do not. Do not. Take disagreements. Take disagreements. Personal. Personal. Personally. Sometimes you take this grievance as a personal attack. It's not personal. I just see it differently. Now look, when it comes to the word of God, oh, they're, they're right. when it comes down to the word of God, that's not a matter of opinion. No, they, I think it's saying this. I think no, ain't what you think is what he said. Flee fornication. That means you don't sleep with nobody you ain't married to. Amen. In your opinion, that you don't do it. You don't, don't do it. First Corinthians 6 says, flee fornication. That means run. run. There ain't no negotiating with your crotch. Run. When you take off your crotch, you don't negotiate with your crotch. You run until it cool off. <laughs> don't stand there. Don't even, don't not fast. Don't print. No, 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 no. Run. Run from it. <laughs> Run. Have, have you ever ran from yourself? Oh, yes. Yep. If you haven't, don't worry, you will. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, you're going after God with all your heart. You got to run from yourself. Yeah. I was in the Whole Foods Market the other day, and they had some delicious looking stuff. How I many of you know I had to turn around and run? <laughs> I don't need to be no wider than I already am. I have to run. Oh my God. <laughs> right. Okay. So if we bite and devour one another, there'll be nobody left. <laughs> yeah. We eat each other up. I taste. Eat each other up. Just a chew them up, spit them out. But you know what? Here's the conviction we gotta have. God is holding us responsible for how we treat the disagreement. Everybody say relationship. 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 <laughs> you, God's holding you responsible for how. He's holding you responsible, even though you're 14 and I'm 21. He's holding you responsible for how you treat me during the conversation. He holds you responsible for how I treat my wife in the conversation. For how I treat you, you even my children. I'm held responsible for the tone that I carry. Okay? I'm held responsible how it comes across. Because sometimes, well, a lot of times, you can do the right thing the wrong way. You can say the right thing with the wrong tone and, and damn the whole thing. You can just <laughs> go. Okay? That's what you don't want to do. That's why the Bible says a soft answer will diffuse wrath. Now, on the other end of that spectrum, all of us have off days. Some more than others, but we have them. 
Some of y'all have them right now. <laughs> they just all. You ain't got no kind of centering going on. You just don't know where you are. You'll be all right. Mm. If you like that, yeah, you're the Holy Ghost until it gets off. And if it's getting like that too often, truly somewhere now. Mm. And you got to center until that thing leaves you alone. Mm. Okay, there's seven days a week. You shouldn't be off all five days. Mm. If you off five days a week, you off. Truly somewhere. Mm. And if you like that four weeks out of the no, 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 no. You shouldn't be like that that often. So we, we, we don't need to eat each other up. You know why churches break up? Because they don't eat each other up. Everybody done fussed everybody out of the church. Mm -mm. We don't you know, talk about everybody out of the church. You know, gossip about them, you know, bite and devour them, and bat bit and tattletale, and now you're gone. Where's the edification? Uh, Ephesians 4.29 says that no corrupt communication proceed from your lips, but that which is edifying for the youth that it may minister grace to the hearers. Now, he ain't just talking about cussing. He's talking about your communication, the way you talk, right? So we don't want to bite and devour one another. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, next thing. Next thing. Somebody say next thing. Okay, so now that we're talking about relationships, let's get two things right quick because I want to stop it a little bit. All right, this is, this is a rough one. Okay, now ladies, all ladies, oh boy, maybe I should stand back here under the cross. I don't know about the video. Okay, ladies. How many of you plan to be married one day? You all got married. <laughs> okay. I've got to warn you. What you're getting yourself in. Flying <laughs> 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 gay marriage on 49. That was a groan. It could not be uttered. <laughs> This is this is this series is not over. Allow me to see if I can find something. There was a post on Facebook this morning uh, by Bishop Coletta Bond that I want to get a hold to. I want to see if I can get a hold. And while while I'm doing that, <laughs> while I'm doing that, I want to talk a little about a little bit about this. Somebody say marriage. Amen. Marriage. 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 Say it again. Marriage. 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 Marriage is a covenant relationship. Say covenant. 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 Okay. Now, ladies, mm -hmm. and y'all forgive me. Pastor Davis is not being chauvinistic. Okay. I'm not I'm not being one-sided. I'm telling you what to expect as a married woman. Okay. I'm, and what, when I say married woman, I mean a woman who has been to the altar, gone from the ceremony, got the papers, got a ring on the finger, and you said, I do. Married. Everybody say married. Married. Say in covenant. In covenant. Okay. All right. Now, the first point I want to bring to your attention, and I said it a little bit last week. I talked about it just a little bit last week. I said, be careful who you submit to. When you submit yourself to quote unquote, a man, you have, okay, there's a cuss word, y'all ready? Y'all ready? When you submit yourself to a man, the Bible says you must obey your own husband. 
saved or not, the Bible didn't make a specification of whether or not he was saved. The Bible says, wives, obey, submit to your own husband. Now, if you do not understand what that type of submission is all about, do not get married. Because this is for life. There are plenty of brothers coming here, and I'm going to tell them that if you don't know what that submission is all about, don't talk to none of the women in my congregation. Amen. I'm going to have to come sit on you. <laughs> I think the Lord, yeah, you know how travel is just waiting to go nowhere. I think the Lord left you big for a reason. Somebody say, wait works. <laughs> and set all this glory on you. You come in here messing with your sheep. <laughs> you tell you it's not bad glory. I'm going to sit all the glory of you coming in here messing with the sheep. Okay? Amen. If you do not understand how to how to properly define the authority of a husband, then no man should say I do. Mm -hmm. Women, if you don't understand, and if you don't trust the spirit, well, oh, well let me say that, that you can trust the wrong spirit. But if you don't know what it is to fully submit to that man, you don't have a business saying I do. How many women have I seen get married to somebody, and the first thing you say is, you can't go to church. Because I said so. Now, depending on how big a schmuck he is, Depending on how big the schmuck he is, you know, especially hopefully, hopefully you didn't run into somebody who's abusive. Go inside your head every Friday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every other day you think about it. Hope you don't run into him. Okay? But I say amen. amen. But what do you do when you run into somebody or run into somebody that's just plain controlling? Now, let's, de let's define between two now. We're, we're not talking, when I say submission, I'm not talking about a man having the authority to be controlled. Real, let me take it this way. Real men of God who have the right heart toward God do not use submission to make their wives bow down to them. Real men who worship God for real and have, and have the heart of God don't do that. Don't do it. I don't treat my wife like a doorman. She's not my daughter, she's my wife. Amen. Are there times I have to let her know? Yes, there are. Because God holds me responsible for what goes on in my household. Amen. Everything is not my fault at 15379 Wisconsin. But it is my responsibility. Meaning, I'm not, I'm no, it's not my fault the dishes don't always get washed. But it's my responsibility because I'm in a household. So I got to do what needs to be done. Okay? So women, you really have to understand what it means. Because if you submit yourself to the wrong dude, you hit. Hello? Amen. So what we have to do is we have to give you, and we're going to pray in a minute because I'm not going to do We have, I have to give you the information so you can see the correct character. This is, this is, once again, I think I said this last week. This is the reason why we, we don't fall in love quick. Amen. Amen. Young people, especially, especially talking to young people. This is the reason why we don't, we don't get into to, to relationships so fast. This is the reason why young people, you don't get into relationships so seriously. Why is a 16 and a 15 year old running, running <laughs> from another 15 year old boy? Come on, I can't come over because my man don't want me to. Excuse me? <laughs> What's that? You ain't got no business being that serious. That's demonic. Don't no boy have no business having that kind of control over a girl. Or the other way around. You, you, there's some strange stuff going on out here today. Y'all know. It used to be just 
just, you know, the, the boy dominating the girl. Now you got the girl going inside the guy with a frying pan, you know, going inside his head with a frying pan. There's all kind of stuff going on out here today. Today you can't tell who who. <laughs> That is funny. Ain't supposed to be no other arrangements made. Marriage is between one man and one woman. And one woman. Okay. I don't care what eBay says from Africa. Good time. <laughs> Marriage is. <laughs> They all the privileges that belong to the first wife. No, marriage is between one man and one woman. Unless you're a Muslim. Somebody say one, one, and one, and one. one. And one. one. Makes, one. makes one. All right, let me read this to you because I got to stop. I want you to come on back. Y'all learned something? Yeah. Okay. Learn something? Yes. All right. Here's what it said. And you can look this up on Facebook on Bishop Blessed Rock Facebook. Looking to get married? Question mark. Here's something to consider. Ladies and gentlemen, hear this. Meet the entire family. Mm. Both sides. Three sides. During the courtship period. Mm. Trust me, you are never stronger than your potential family system. If they don't like you or your whole culture is opposite theirs, it will be an uphill battle. Uphill battle. While in premarital counseling, which is mandatory. And say it, Pastor. And you might as well know Pastor Davis is not putting nobody together if they ain't doing no counseling. I ain't not. Well, you know, we in love. And we just want to get done right away. No. And if you're 19, don't even come this way. I'm not marrying nobody under 21. Somebody's 18. I'm not. Not. <laughs> With certain maturity, you got to think, people, this is for life. For life. That's why I'm waiting until I'm 49. This is for life. Y'all won't be lying to you when we take you. Truth. 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 All right. All right. Premarital counseling, mandatory. Watch this. Observe them. The family and your significant others. Observe them during holidays, crisis, worship, or just kicking it other times. Observe family dynamics, listen for family history, habits, secrets, and watch who has your potential ear. And look real good and real close at their economic situation. If the family is broke, that's what you're marrying into. If the family been broke for the last 30 years, then the person you're going after, if it's the man going after the girl, and she come from a broke family, that's what, that's what you basically marry into. If the man got good financial sense, and she don't, it's an uphill battle. That's a division, okay? Not saying that the marriage can't happen, but that's going do you know how many marriages in this in this country break up over finances? Financial stress. Okay. Here's the next thing. You are never marrying one person. Mm -mm. This is what this is what young men don't understand. When a, there, there will come a time when a young man's gonna knock on my door for a man. He's not gonna understand. He can't cut around me and get hurt. Not without having his testicles removed. He can't cut around me. <laughs> Ain't no phone numbers being exchanged. When he asks her for her phone number, she's going to say 313 748 8811. And the first voice he's going to hear is Praise the Lord. <laughs> Who this? This is Amanda's father. Who are you? And I ain't gonna have no sugar on my tongue. I need to know who you is. Who is she? You are not marrying one person. Watch out for that young lady. Young man wants to run around with her parents and just get straight to you. Don't want to meet your mama. 
don't want to meet your daddy, cross that off the list. Say, no, you can't meet my pops, you can't meet my moms, you can't, we done. This conversation is over. Some of y'all want me to just put the mic down and end this sermon right now. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I'll be done with you, but I got to get you out. <laughs> okay? You're not marrying one person. He can't come in here and come after you and not speak to the family. No, you need to meet my dad and my uncles, my aunties, my grandma, my sisters, and all my brothers. We can see you. All of us. Somebody say all of you. You're never marrying one person. You are married into a system and the culture. How many of you know a family is a culture? If the young man does not want the young ladies of all ages, if the young man don't want to get to know you and your family, cross him off the list. You don't want to come over for dinner, cross him off the list. Don't want to sit down and talk to your mom. Ladies, if a young man don't want to get to know your kid, cross him off the list. You got to go. Don't want to meet your pastor? Yes, I said it. You need to come meet my pastor. I worship. Do you? I said, I worship. Do you? And if he says, I submit to the will of Allah, cancel that. I just don't understand. You know, he's a nice person, but he's a Muslim and I'm a Christian. I think we get along just fine. No. Let me tell you what's going to be the problem with that. And I'm going to end up in just a few minutes. Let me read this. You are marrying into a system and culture. Make sure their system and culture, everybody say system, system. and culture are compatible with yours. You have to make sure the person that you're dealing with that their system of culture and family life is compatible with yours. If it's opposite, it will not work. If they are opposite your God, what fellowship, according to Hebrews 6, 14, what fellowship have light with darkness? The Bible teaches us that we are not to marry outside of our faith. So no, no. It doesn't make Muslims into hope witnesses. It doesn't make them mean people. It doesn't make them ugly people. But they have a different faith beat than you. You believe in the Holy Ghost. You believe in talking in tongues. You believe in praying in the Spirit. You believe in casting out devils. You believe in serving one God and one God only. His name is Jesus. You believe in the virgin birth. You believe in sanctification. You believe in holiness. You believe in, uh, in angels. You believe in prosperity. You believe in tithing. Oh, come on, there's doctrine to this thing. You believe in offerings. You believe in the supernatural. They don't believe none of that. <clears throat> and if you hook up with somebody that's of a different faith gender than you, it will only be for one reason. It's either going to be sexual or it's going to be sexual. Mm. You just look good enough to hang with. You got enough this and that. Okay? Right? You just got enough of this and that to hang with. I don't need to clarify, do I? No. All right. Okay? So you've got to be careful. This is where prayer and discernment come in. All right? Give me just a few more minutes. We'll be done. We're going to come to the altar. Somebody say, I love the altar. I love the altar. Right. Revelations 2, 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let me tell you why. Pastor Davis is teaching so hard on this. So, but Pastor, I want to experience the glory of God. I want to experience the anointing, and you will. You stay in Zion anytime, so you will. Amen. 
Amen. That's what we major in, right? Amen. But I don't want that glory broken up by bad relationships. <laughs> Hello? Amen. Amen. I don't want that glory broken up. Carolyn coming here one day with a dude on her arm. Next thing you know, I don't see her for five weeks. Don't see her for ten weeks. Where you at? Well, you know, um, he didn't want me to come, Pastor. Really? Well, we got to go take him out. <laughs> you got to go. Well, you know, he's not bad. I just love him. And, you know, I, I believe God won't change his heart. What? Yep. If they haven't experienced the same deliverance as you, you're going to run into problems. All right, all right. I don't know what I think I'm picking on. Let me put the shoe on my head. Lady Davis, y'all, I told you about when Lady Davis came to me, right? One day, this is before she was delivered. Don't laugh at this story, okay? One day, we were sitting on the porch, somewhere between the ball, and uh, she said, I, uh, I got a question, and then I got a secret today. So I'm like, okay. She says, uh, well, I think she told me the secret first. I said, well, what's the problem? She said, uh, well, I'm on cocaine. I said, oh, girl, I thought you had a problem. I'm like, I thought you were going to tell me something big. I thought you were going to tell me you were a man or something. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm I mean, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's how crazy guys think. When, when, if, if a girl comes up to me and she says, if, if, especially since when I've been dating, and she said, I got a problem, I need to retell really you about something, we think it works. <laughs> we're like, okay, we just try to prepare and grace. <laughs> You're a said, man, you know, I knew it. You know, so my, my Christian thank you because I'm not. Then she says, well, I, I, I want to ask you something. I said, what is it? She said, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to have a relationship with you on a date. I said, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I say this like that? Oh, no, I can't. Mm -mm. Swerve. Back to that friend zone. No. Nope. Friend zone Don't jump out of there. Friend zone heart. Friend zone heart. Don't jump out of there. So there, there are times and seasons. 
But how many of you would rather the Lord say no to you and say to life? Amen. Amen. This is this is why, I, and I guess this is why my saints word is not bad because I don't believe in manipulating people with prophecy. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah, I know how to do it. I know how to set the atmosphere. <laughs> I know how to prop. I can fill this church just off of my prophetic gift alone. If I never taught, if I didn't love you much, I would just prophesy to you and never teach you anything. And not teach you how to see the devil come. People want to work. Mm -hmm. They will come in here. Give me, give me a couple of weeks. I can advertise it. The prophet is in the house. And if you need to know the word of God for your life, you need to come to this prophecy convention. The, December 27th, 3 p.m. at the light center. I could do it. And have God put his foot in my backside? No. <laughs> there, there are seasons. When I have to prophesy, the mother says, Mother, the Lord says, straighten this. Kill this. Do this. Or else he's going to cut this off. He's going to cut that off. Let me tell you something. And my children will tell you. Pastor Davis is an equal opportunity rebuker. Yeah. Who's been in my house that I haven't reviewed? Nobody. I rebuke everybody. And you can't call me a spiritual father or pastor and I can't chastise you. Come on, say it. If you don't call me Father Davis, I have to have the ability. Now that don't mean I'm just going to, you know, wipe you. First of all, first of all, let, let, let me get a little vigorous on you. If you don't get ignorant with me in front of people, I ain't going to get ignorant with you. But you turn ignorant, I got to get you. See, now I got to touch you. <laughs> you get ignorant with it, I got to come down with it. But see, if you're in the flesh, I can't come back to you in the flesh. I gotta speak the spirit. There are all these times when I say, you know, there's, there's plenty of times, as pretty as Jasmine is, my guys tell her, no, baby, you can't have that. And I mean, no. She don't like it. I don't like it when I tell her no. Her and Amanda think they can just swing their eyes at me. And get the thing they want, and for the most part, they do, is why I ain't got no money now. <laughs> <laughs> Almost done, y'all. But then sometimes I tell them no. Okay. So, so the point of that is, is that, but there's a right heart behind chastisement. So, I have, there, there will come a time when everybody in here, from the pulpit to the back door, may have to, you know, it, it's, it's going to be one of the rough days. But this, 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 there may come a day. Oh, well, I ain't going to say no man. There is going to come a day. What I'm going to have to come to do is say, the Lord says, cut this. Leave this alone. And you don't want the Lord to get accurate on you. You don't want the Lord to walk up to you and say, about five years ago, I see somebody in your past that their, their name began with an S, and they used to stay on this street and that street and on this zip code. And the Lord says, they're coming back into your world in about six weeks, and when they do, run. I would rather the Lord get that accurate with me and save my life. Amen. Yes, Amen. That gift ain't to show off with. That's to save your life. Amen. And if you trust, if you trust us as your pastors, we have to be able to speak to your life in such a manner where we say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Princess, prince, I got to tell you, the Lord is saying, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You really need to seek the Lord out there. You really need to go, you know. Go into deep prayer before you make that decision. And you need to don't 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 go into that quick. Because number one, we don't want no funerals. Amen. 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 When we see, when we 
you see, you going into the dump. Are we supposed to be quiet? No. no. First, the bud, the bud, the flower, the fruit. First, the blade, the ear, then the full stalk. Out of court, holy place, holy holies. When something begins, the Bible says uh, that uh, when lust is conceived, <clears throat> it brings forth sin. I'm sorry, when the thought is conceived, everybody points in your head. I'm almost done. When a thought is conceived, it brings forth lust. When lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And the Bible says when sin finishes its course, it brings forth death. But it all started with a thought that wasn't checked. That's where sin starts. Doesn't start in the crotch, it starts up here. You can feel it elsewhere, but it starts here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, two more minutes. I'm almost done. Y'all wake up. Don't you go sleep on me? Tap your name. You see, trying to learn something. Almost done. Almost done. You young ladies, don't get so googly eyed over these fellas. Mm -hmm. Don't be all right. I love you. You looking at me? If he's not all God, he is none of you. All right, let me cover a few points before I got to get out of here. Spiritual discernment, I would not have you ignorant. We discern by prayer. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, bind my mind, <clears throat> bind my mind to your will. To your will. Every day when you get up, pray that the will of the Lord be done. The minute you shut your prayer life off, you can just shut off your spiritual discernment. You couldn't see Satan coming with a brick hammer in front of you when you stop praying. Everybody say, stop praying. Stop praying. They stop playing. Stop playing. Don't stop playing. Don't stop playing. Being filled, don't regret the word. Um, God does not talk to people who do not talk to Him. I say God does not talk to people who do not talk to Him. Amen. God do not talk to people who do not talk to Him. Amen. Next principle: You will find rest when you surrender in His presence. Amen. Okay. If you're unsure about a relationship. If it's, listen, let me tell you something. First of all, let me get them in here. Young ladies, you, you can find yourself liking somebody or feeling some kind of way, as y'all say. But there's this little wrecking going on in here. If there's no peace about that, leave it be. Matter of fact, leave it right here. Yeah. <clears throat> Until. There is a surety that the Lord is either saying surely no or surely yes. Okay? I ain't got time to really get on that. Right? Soul ties. The Lord spoke this to me. I got to get this done. And we'll be on. Uh, soul ties must be broken. Where your treasure is, Matthew 6 and 21, there will your heart be also. God never stops dealing with us about our Isaacs. God never stops dealing with us about the stuff we want to do that may be out of his will. Say amen. Amen. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6 and 21, all soul ties must be broken. Young ladies, let me tell you what a soul tie is. And some of us who are older didn't have it. Soul ties are mental bondages that come from being sexual with people, okay? Or that come from being in a relationship with them for so long. Praise the Lord. Okay? And and as a part of you, still attracted to that person. That means there's a soul tie. And say, well, you know, now you got to be careful when you tell people, 
You'll always be a special place in my heart for me. Be careful with that. Because first of all, your heart only belongs to one person. Amen. And he's jealous. Okay? Now this is one thing that people don't seem to believe back today. Because you want to find out how jealous he is, put somebody else in his place. That's, that's the fastest way to get him killed. Okay? God is jealous. Somebody said God is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. That's the fastest way to get him killed, preacher. That's the fastest way to get him removed out of you. When God's got his hand on you and he's got a plan for your life, and you bring somebody in your heart and your space that he did not ordain to be there, he'll move you. Oh, yes, he will. And he has the authority to, especially if you told him yes. Amen. Oh, yes, Peter will, Father. I'll obey, Father. He says, are you sure? Yes. Yes, I'll obey, Father. And before you know it, people start dropping out of your life. Bloop, 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 bloop. Why? Because you told him yes. And he will not have any other God before him. Amen. Amen. Especially if you've been delivered. Amen. Let me, let me, let me, once again, put the shoe on my own foot. Do you know the Lord will remove me? Let, let me tell you this. Let me make this plain. The minute I start to become manipulative and domineering with her, Pastor Davis is gone. The minute my heart starts to change and starts to turn into something other than what I am now, I will no longer be passing here. God will move me. After much wooing, after trying to get me straight, he will, do you know how loving God is? He will send prophet after the prophet after the prophet. He'll, he'll get in the TV. He'll get in the dogs. He'll do, he'll do whatever he has to do to keep on talking to you. Or says, come back. Come on. You just look up and you know, the, the billboard is talking to you. You turn on the commercial, the commercial's talking to you. You turn on the radio and there's a preacher preaching on you, talking to you. Now, I know how to get to you, but if he do all of that and you still go stupid, the Bible says that when you willfully sin, there remains no more sacrifice. So what do you mean not willfully sin? Willfully sin is not speaking of a goose. Not speaking of, oh, I mean goo. No, it's not speaking of goo. It means that, no, you're backsliding to the point where you're doing this on a constant basis. You're backsliding into the lifestyle again. God delivered you from being a whore. Now you're whoring again. All of this, first it started with one, then one every other week. Then now you got one every week. Now you got two every week. Now you're holding on Sundays and we don't see you no more. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're coming in looking all dirty. What's wrong with you? Where, where your voice used to be nice and sweet. Oh, praise the Lord. Now you're coming down on some. <laughs> <laughs> Some dude want to come visit. 
you sitting on the side here. I want to let you know, all the church's attention will be on him. <laughs> it's not a day we're looking forward to. So the first thing I want to do is come on to the office, son. And I'm, I'm going to warn y'all. I'm going to warn all y'all. I'm going to warn y'all. I'm going to warn you all right now. And I'm cutting this sermon off. I'm warning you all right now. Don't come in here in front of me holding hands with no Negro, because I'm going to chop both your hands off. <laughs> we don't want to see that. We, we won't see that. Your mama gave birth to them hands. She don't want to see no dude holding your hand. She didn't get permission to do it. Your brothers don't want to see it. Nobody in family, I don't want to see it. And please don't let him sit with his arm all around you. No, no, no. no, no. no you ask him to be killed. <laughs> Why they have to kill you? This, you know, this is a child that I raised from a zygote to a human being. And you want to come in here and put your little nasty arm? No, no, no. We're going to take you out. <laughs> Y'all learn anything today? Yes. Okay, so we learned about relationships. We learned about marriage relationships. We learned about church relationships. We learned about disagreements. We learned about division. This cannot be a church that thrives in power and no character. Joe, come on to the organ. Got to bring it on the This cannot be a church that thrives in power but not character. We cannot be a church that knows how to pray in the Holy Ghost and cast out devils, but not apologize. Oh, <coughs> the two don't mix. This cannot be a church that we can discern and see angels, but don't know how to fix it. This And guess what? The, the husband man has to be the first partaker of the food. Give me something a little soft. One, one, one day, I hope I don't embarrass Mike. One, one, one day we were uh, we were still at the tabernacle, and um, I goofed off. I goofed up with the, with the musicians thing. I forgot what I did, but I missed You're up. Embarrassed, man. <laughs> Mike said, Pastor, I'm a little bit upset because I'm some kind of way. ABC lesson so. And I said, You know what, Mike? That was my fault. I said, Man, I'm sorry. I had to show him that just because I got a title pastor from out of the name, they don't mean anything about me. I have to be the first one. Right? Remember? I said, hey man, I'm, I'm sorry. That, that was my fault. You just annoyed me. Yeah, I, I forgot what it was, but I, I, messed, I messed up or something like that. But I said, man, that was my, my fault. I'm sorry. Please. There are times when I have to say, <clears throat> leaders have to learn to say, please forgive me. But everybody has to learn how to say, please forgive me. Everybody's got to learn to submit. Say, everybody. Come on, let's come to the altar for a few minutes. Come on. Everybody, come on to the altar.